they have hyperlinks to all the college's websites. It's it's a very, very different than it was 10 years ago. Um, so much better than it was 10 years ago. So um, there is also like a support service line. So you can always go to the solution center and you can contact them 24 seven. Um, but let me very quickly kind of walk through your college search tab. So notice that there's 974 colleges that have partnered with Common App. Um, you can search for any one of them based on, you know, a variety of, of filters, a variety of, you can, yeah, you can search for them by country, by, but I mean, the country's going to be the same, by state, um, zip code, the term that you want to enter, application fee, writing requirements, standardized test policy. So you can search for them based on a variety of metrics, whether a letter of recommendation is re required, all of these things. Um, and once you search for the school, and I'll, since it's a, a special day, I'll look for Cornell. So we're looking at Cornell University. Um, if you were to click that plus sign, it would add it to your My Colleges tab, but let's just look at what more info gives us first. So this drop down menu here, college information, college website, admissions office. Um, so I just wanna walk through these three things really quickly. So as it pertains to college information, if you click on that tab, it brings you to the page for Cornell, um, the email address for their admissions office, the phone number that you can reach them at, their address, links to the college website, virtual tour, college navigator, application deadline. Um, Leo had just mentioned that he applied early decision and has received his admittance. Um, uh, your the 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 application fee, so you know, eighty bucks to put the application in. Standardized test policy never required. See website. All of these. So it gives you all the information that your heart can desire about any of the schools that you'd be willing to apply to, um, and then you know has the additional information that each college puts on and the requirements. So your Common App requirements, uh, what college questions they are and the fact that there's a writing supplement. And I'll talk about the supplement, or Leo, I guess you can talk about the supplement in just a bit. Um, but yeah, I'm just gonna go back to the search tool. And again, if we click on college website for Cornell, it hyperlinks you directly to their website. So this is the homepage for Cornell, um, tells you kind of any and all information you'd be willing to look for, a hackathon, <laughs> electric, you know, different research that they're doing, explore Cornell on social media, all of these things. So um, quick, easy, the Common App website takes you to, you know, wherever you need to go for um, researching and looking up any colleges that you're interested in. And then I'll just take you to the last tab. Oftentimes this admissions tab will be, it'll hyperlink you to the same page. Ah, look, Cornell has separate ones. So um, yeah, either way, the admissions, this is like the, the, the undergraduate admissions page. So you can look at all the things that are required for the application. It's going to be in, information that's reiterated in the Common App website, but you know, they have their separate website for it as well. They'll have content information for financial aid, all of those things. So their telephone number or for admissions, I apologize, their telephone number, all of those things. So can always reach out to them. But again, all this information is actually like embedded in the Common App website. So it's a bit redundant, but obviously Cornell has their own website to explain the same information that's on the Common App website. And I will click the plus sign. So that'll take Cornell from our search and allow it to go to our My Colleges tab. So when we get back there, but before I jump there, I'll just talk about the financial aid resources very quickly. So, um, Financial aid, they talk about how federal student loans, you know, the Department of Education awards $150 billion a year to more than 13 million students, all these things, yada, 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 yada. So uh, your state government, all of these things. So state granting, state, uh, state funding, uh, federal funding, all of these things are here. So your FAFSA, which you'll have to fill out to apply for student aid through the federal government, um, and then there's also the CAS report, which, yeah, the CSS profile that you'll have to fill out for kind of private institutions as well. Um, so literally any information that you can think of that you would need for financial aid is going to be in this tab. Um, your college search tool has all the information about all the colleges that are partnered with the Common App. 
Um, and yeah, there is a lot of information embedded in this one website at this point. So it's kind of a one-stop shop for all the information that you can think of. Um, so I'll move over to the My Colleges tab. And Leo, I will let you jump in. Um, I think that it makes the most sense actually to start talking about the Common App and then we can go into like the writing supplement. Does that sound good? Perfect. Excellent. All right. So one important thing about Cornell University is that you don't apply to Cornell. You apply to one of its eight undergraduate schools, uh, certain schools like Brown, for example. You submit one application to all of Brown, but for Cornell, as a person applying for undergraduate school, you submitted to specific schools. I, for example, applied and got into the College of Arts and Sciences. Uh, there's a business school, a college of human ecology, and so on. And each individualized school has its own writing supplement. Uh, I know that all of this terminology can be a little bit confusing for uh, non-senior students, juniors, maybe even sophomores, but there is a personal statement. That's one essay that overlooks all of your college applications through the Common App. And then there are supplemental essays, which means specifically individualized essays per school. And in Cornell's case, there is a separate essay for each school within Cornell. Uh, Kareem is currently sharing the um, screen to- Yeah, this uh, is your common, the, the personal essay for the common app. Yes, yes, so this is the personal statement. So this, yep. these questions that you see here apply to any schools that you apply to on the common app. So this is something that you have to put a lot of thought in uh, ultimately, the essays do matter quite a lot in your application. I think uh, reasonably, some might argue even more so than the numbers and the statistics. Uh, but you should really think critically about what question you want to answer. And there is a choice, as you can see in the final, uh, the final question is to pick any, any essay topic of your choice. So this really is up to you. They want you to be creative. They want you to just share yourself. Again, the motive of these essays is to show who you are, especially when a lot of times uh, the interview is more for you than for the school. Uh, so the essay that I picked was reflect, um, reflect, um, discuss an accomplishment, event, or realization that sparked a period of personal growth and a new understanding of yourself or others. So I think a great common misconception about these essays is that you have to write some elaborate, crazy story. Uh, remember, we're all high school, normal high school students. Not everyone has the story of a lifetime. The trick is to make the normal sound extraordinary uh, because it, it's possible. Uh, I wrote about uh, a Mandarin speech that I gave in my freshman year of high school. Uh, I took Mandarin for close to four years now. Uh, it's a great passion of mine. I want to preface this by saying that I plan to major in China and Asia Pacific Studies at Cornell along with government. And I chose to write about a speech that I gave in Mandarin because it connects to my major. You have to think about your college applications as one overarching story. This is all kind of your true essence, if uh, for lack of better words, but you really, really want to convey the kind of student that you are. And that is why I picked that topic. I wrote about what it felt like to be up on that stage, waiting for my Mandarin teacher to come see me, waiting for my mother to come see me. And despite the fact that I didn't win first place, I did win second place in all of New York City. And I discussed that my Mandarin teacher was so proud of me regardless. Uh, to give um, just a little clue about what I mean by encapsulating your full story and turning the ordinary into extraordinary, you have to interweave into your essay. And what I mean by that is that you have to put little tidbits about yourself in a story. Your essay cannot simply be going to this Mandarin speech, presenting and leaving. I mentioned in this essay, for example, that I have had a passion in Mandarin for many years, that it is something that I want to learn. Mention perhaps what you plan on doing in relation to your subject matter. You have to put as much information about yourself without it at the same time seeming uh, too overbearing. So you want to sound natural, but you also want to make sure that the colleges have an understanding of who you are. Uh, another important, important thing about the essays is powerful, powerful wording. Uh, I, the currently the application process is still ongoing, so I won't unfortunately be able to share my full essays, but just to read some sentences 
uh, from some of my essays. I'll go on here. Uh, this is one. There is no other Asia Pacific or Chinese studies major in the world that is a better fit for what I want to do. Sentences like that, they're graspers. They pull people in. You have to remember that the people in charge of applications are reading through hundreds of essays all the time, just scrolling, sliding through essays. You want to be that student. You want to be that paper that they think about when they come home. You really want to make them stop, make them consider. It's not always about the extravagant story. You know, you can find 100 students who went on a study abroad trip to Paris and learned French. You can find the same kind of stories over and over. It's about the students that these essays are written about. It's your story, how you are a fit to these schools, what you plan on doing there, and why they should pick you for their school. Perfect. So uh, I concur with everything that you said, Leo. The only thing that I will like double down on is a big piece of information that Leo has just mentioned, is that these essays need to be about you. Um, a common mistake that people do is they get to Leo's point lost in the weeds of the story. Like they're kind of like walking you through the timeline. I did this, then I had breakfast, then I went over here, then I had lunch, then this, then that. And it gets kind of like too, too lost in the weeds of like telling the story when it's losing the essence of who you are. So um, what we typically do for these is just kind of read through and I'll, I'll talk to you all about like the connection between them. So. Um, there are seven options that you have for um, doing your Common App essay, um, the personal statement. So some students have a background, identity, interest, or talent that is so meaningful, they believe their application would be incomplete without it. If this sounds like you, then please share your story. The second one, the lessons we take from obstacles we encounter can be fundamental to later success. Recount a time when you face- Take you hear me, right? Yes, I do, Francis. Oh my God. I have to give you a crazy update. Oh. We have someone in the audience. Natalie. 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 Hi. Natalie, can we see you? Guess what, guys? In real time, it is 720. Natalie was just <laughs> accepted to the University of Pennsylvania, the Huntsman. Oh, program. wow. Yay! Let's give her a big bravo. Right. She got her letter. Natalie, do we see you? We are so proud of you, Natalie. Yay! Thank you. You, Natalie, Thank you. you know, you know, Leo. Leo, you know, remember Natalie who like lived on our couch at Queller? Okay. <laughs> Natalie, we're so proud of you. Okay. And Leo got into Cornell. Natalie, are you, uh, how excited are you? Oh, uh, very, very excited. Just like calling family members left and right. So, oh yeah. My God. So um, Natalie, I'm sure you have to go. Thank you. I hope I was one of the first people to find out, right? Yeah. I hope. All right. <laughs> Thank you so much. I'm so proud of you. They're going to keep going. And then, Natalie, you're going to do one of these next, okay? Um, <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Natalie, yeah, I, wait. Natalie, send me the screenshot. I want to see your acceptance letter, okay? Mm-hmm. Yep. I'm proud of you. Don't forget. Marketing, marketing. Okay, take care. Keep going, guys. Congratulations, <laughs> Natalie. All right, let's keep going. Okay, so the second essay is the lessons we take from obstacles we encounter can be fundamental to later success. Recount a time when you face a challenge, setback, or failure. How did it affect you, and what did you learn from the experience? The third one, reflect on a time when you questioned or challenged a belief or idea. What prompted your thinking? What was the outcome? The fourth one, uh, yeah, fourth one, reflect on something that someone has done for you that has made you happy or thankful in a surprising way. How has this gratitude affected or motivated you? The one that Leo did, discuss an accomplishment event or realization that sparked a period of personal growth and a new understanding of yourself or others. The sixth one, describe a topic, idea, or concept you find so engaging that it makes you lose all track of time. Why does it captivate you? What or who do you turn to when you want to learn more? And then the last one is kind of the catch-all. Share an essay on a topic of your choice. It can be one you've already written, one that responds to a different prompt, or one of your own design. So the, the, the thing that kind of connects all of these essays together is that 
they all include the word you. They're all asking about you. What prompted your thinking? If this sounds like you, then share your story. Share your story. How does it affect you? And what did you learn from the experience? How has this gratitude affected or motivated you? Like it's all, even though the, the, the stories will be rooted in some event that happened to you or some thing that was bestowed upon you, like the core of the essay is to make sure that you're talking about yourself. What what kind of thinking did it prompt within you? What kind of um, changes did it catalyze within you? Like the brunt of the essay, it's 650 words, 550 plus need to be kind of focused on who you are and what impact whatever event that happened in your life had on you. And to Leo's point, um, I'll talk a little bit about my essay um, and say that it, it isn't like your essay, your personal statement doesn't necessarily have to line up exactly with what you're choosing to be your major. Though, in Leo's case, that's beautiful, right? Like, it's amazing that he had the opportunity to kind of talk about a Mandarin speech and now he's applying to a major that is kind of in that realm, right? Um, but not everyone is going to have that. So, um, and it's kind of unlikely that, that, is necess that, that that's the case. Um, though, uh, speaking about myself for a bit, one of the biggest things that I did in order to get into the engineering program at Columbia is that I did research in a chemistry and a biology lab for three summers before I applied to college. So like I showed the acumen as it pertained to STEM. Um, but my essay actually had nothing to do with that because I, you know, sure, I could have written about um, the impact that those research experiences had on me. Um, but when I thought about it, I was like, ah, those, those were transformative experiences. These aren't going to glean some type of insight into who I am as a person. So instead, I talked about really what at my core makes me who I am, and that's my family. Um, and I talked about my nephew specifically. I talked about kind of struggles that he was going through and like trying to help him through those struggles and having to think introspectively about those things and see that life is not... Um, just a very linear path like everyone has their own path and though everyone has their own path that doesn't necessarily mean like just knowing someone's starting point doesn't mean that you know their ending point is kind of like the big takeaway from the essay um and I talked about like the introspection that that caused me in interacting with my nephew so I didn't talk about my nephew for the majority of the essay I talked about what interacting with my nephew did to me um so hopefully that makes sense and hopefully that is helpful all of the tips that Leo gave were spot on. So I hope that folks um, were focused as he was going through those things. Um, and I will leave it there for right now. And I'll just quickly kind of brush over the other pieces of the common portion of the application on the Common App website. So notice that you have all of these tabs here on the left, profile, family, education, testing, activities. I'll walk through, and then courses and grades. I'll walk through those quickly. So in setting up your profile, a lot of this happens, like once you make, once you make an account on the Common App website, a lot of this is auto-populated. So my name, you know, my pronouns, um, if I go by a nickname, uh, my gender, um, so on and so forth, uh, my birthday, you know, the standard things, address, um, contact information, demographics, I'll click on that one, just through representative, so my sex, um, am I part of the armed forces? Certainly not. Uh, are, am, you know, uh, kind of race and ethnicity type questions. Um, and they get really granular here. Like this is something that's kind of unique and has been coming out over the course of the past year or two, um, is that like when you choose one thing, so in my specific case, I'm black. So when you choose the fact that you're black, obviously there's like many different things that that can mean. So you can be African-American, you can be kind of like from the continent or have like deeper ties to the continent. So Africa, and then in my case, my family is Jamaican. So they actually have Caribbean here. So there, there is a lot of like ways that they'll break down and categorize people and all these things. So it is actually quite a quite nice thing at this point, the fact that they have um, that level of granularity on uh, the admissions process these days. Um, so language, um, in my case, I only speak English, um, 
Leo's case, he probably would have a different answer to that. <laughs> uh, geography and nationality. So where I'm from, all of these things. Um, yeah, if I will be applying for a fee waiver. Um, and we talk about this a bit. Uh, so let me like dive into this just for just one second. So our member colleges want to make sure that application fees don't pose a barrier for any student who wishes to apply for admission. Do you feel that your financial circumstances might qualify you for an application fee waiver? So a lot of people, they see this question and they're like, ah, you know, I probably won't qualify for that. But let's look. There are a lot of ways to qualify for a common app fee waiver. And they're not as difficult as you might think. So this, like read this carefully. Any of the following indicators of economic need can qualify, can qualify you for a common app fee waiver. So not all, all don't need to be applicable. Any of them should be like, just one needs to be applicable. And it's possible that that one is enough, is sufficient to qualify you for a common app fee waiver. So let's just look at them. You received or are eligible to receive an ACT or SAT testing fee waiver. Okay, interesting. You're enrolled in or eligible to participate in federal free or reduced price lunch. So I know for me, I qualify for reduced price lunch. Um, I believe that the only application that I paid for was my application to Columbia though. Um, but I didn't, I can't, I, I can't actually remember. It's too many years ago, but um, Columbia was the only application that I paid for, and every other application that I put in was free. Um, your annual family income falls under the income eligibility guidelines set by the USDA Food and Nutrition Service. You're enrolled in federal, state, or local program that aids students from low-income families, TRIO, Upward Bound. Um, your family receives public assistance. You live in federally subsidized public housing. Like, sure, some of these may not be applicable, but... Um, yeah, certainly the, the one that kind of sticks out to me is like qualifying for free or reduced price lunch because a lot of people qualify for free or reduced price lunch. I don't know what the benchmark is, but I just know in my case, I've seen quite a bit of that. So a lot of people would gloss over that question. There's no harm in kind of like just, you know, saying you think that you would you would qualify for that and giving it a shot. Wanted to touch on that quickly. Um, and then the other tabs here. So asking about your family. So it'll ask about kind of parental information. Um, if you have any children, your siblings, specifically if your siblings are going to college at the same time, ask about your educational background. So it'll ask about high school information. Um, yeah, I went to Queens and for the Sciences. Again, when you enter, when you graduate, yada, 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 all of these things if you attended another college or university. Um, but obviously this would be like just for a singular class. It wouldn't be for an entire semester. If it was for an entire semester, then you'd be qualifying as a transfer student. And that would be a, a little bit different of an application. But either way, grades, current and most recent year courses, honors. So I will actually talk about this briefly. So if you've taken coursework at a college or university, please indicate the number of, coll the number of colleges. So Okay, cool, one college, um, a summer program, credit awarded directly by college, dual enrollment with high school, um, so on and so forth. So there's some schools that do dual enrollment with colleges. There's some schools that have just a summer program where you take college courses and the credit awarded directly by college. So that would be kind of like your college now type courses or what have you, if I'm not mistaken. Um, if you earned a degree, all of these things, perfect. Um, and let me set this back to zero. Then grades, so your graduating class size, your rank, if you know, um, your GPA and all of these things. Obviously an important metric, but again, to Leo's point, um, like even if your GPA is not stellar, don't let that kind of make you feel like you shouldn't be applying to colleges. Let, don't don't, don't self-select is kind of what they call it. Like don't not apply because you feel like you won't get in. You should apply to a few reach schools. Like it's great practice because sometimes you'll be surprised. Um, and I will say this briefly as well. Again, I've been working at Quella Prep for about 10 years. In that time, I've advised many students um, going through the college application process. Um, 
And that's one of the things that I see extremely often is that people self-select and I have to encourage people to, hey, let's put an application into three or four reach schools. Like, I think you're underselling yourself. Um, there's no harm in just putting the application in. It's very easy, all things considered, especially given that so much of the, so much of the application is the common app, you know? And then you just have to fill out the writing supplements. So you have to do a bit of research, but it's worth it. And sometimes students will get in. I've seen students who didn't think that they, they would get into Carnegie Mellon, get into Carnegie Mellon. Um, students who didn't think they would get into Cornell, get into Cornell. Uh, and it, it happens. So um, if there's one thing that you take away from this call, you know, apply to a few reach schools. I'm not saying only apply to schools that you feel like are completely out of your range. That certainly wouldn't be the smartest thing to do, but you should put a few reach schools in there. Um, and I will also say that Columbia at a time may have even been considered a reach school for me. Um, I wasn't at the top of my high school class, but I, I, I certainly put the application in and all these things have worked out and, you know, um, so I hope that that is a bit of encouragement for folks if they're feeling down because sometimes it can, it can bear down on you, this the application process. So current and most recent courses. Um, so obviously when you're applying to schools, you're in your senior year, they don't have the grades from your senior year. So the, they don't have your, 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 your report card from your senior year or anything like that. So they're asking you about the courses that you're currently in all of these things, a so course name, subject, yada, 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 and they'll ask about information. What does this tell the schools? So this tells them how, you know, how much have you let up off the gas, essentially. Like, you're in your senior year, you figure, ah, uh, you know, this, this year doesn't matter, this is the year that I'm allowed to kick back. This is where they'll find out that you, you've kicked back and you really shouldn't be. Um, in my senior year, I took a bunch of AP courses, uh, and did well in those AP courses and they helped me like very much when I went into college because I had a bunch of credits already knocked out. Um, so certainly another takeaway is do not let up off the gas. Don't quit all your extracurriculars. Don't take the easiest courses that you can just to get out of the school. Still challenge yourself. Um, it is important. Honors that are applicable. Do you wish to report any honors? So um, yeah, honors title. And this is fairly broad and they give you up to five slots. So it can literally be anything, um, but it should be something academic is kind of like the idea here. Community-based organizations. Um, yeah, yeah, any community-based organizations that you provide free assistance for. So um, the counselor that oversaw your work, that type of thing. So I often tell people that for me, I went to, um, food banks and such over the holidays um, to kind of like feed housing insecure folks. Um, so, you know, that that was one thing that I would put in that slot and then future plans. Um, yeah, highest degree you intend to earn career interest. And again, to Leo's point earlier of thinking about what you wanna do with the degree, um, this is kind of something where you would reflect that type of information. So testing is kind of self-explanatory, your SAT, your ACT, so on and so forth. Um, and you're going to be reporting those scores there. Your APs as well, you're going to be reporting those scores there. So extremely important. Um, your activities, we should just make a quick pause here. So activities, notice how there's quite a bit of breath here. Arts or music, clubs, and community engagement, family responsibilities family responsibilities, like this is broad, um, hobbies, sports, work or volunteering, other experiences that be meaningful to, that might be meaningful to you. I have a student right now that I do college advising for. And one of the things that we put on this, we put in the activity section was family responsibilities. The fact that he takes care of his, his younger siblings, like he has two younger siblings um, and he's been fairly involved in kind of like raising and taking care of um, when, you know, like babysitting for when his parents had to go to work or stuff like that. So, um, yeah, fairly important. Um, and certainly there's a lot of breath here, like that you can put up to 10 activities. So what does that mean to us? It means that they want to, th this is a very broad category. They want to hear all the different activities that you're engaged with. Um, 
And it doesn't necessarily mean that you have to fill out all 10, but it certainly does mean, you know, err on the side of filling it out, err on the side of including. Um, and often people ask the question of, you know, what, what are some examples of some, some, some things that you put down there? So the, um, the, the research experience that I had over the summers when I was in high school is certainly something that I would put here. Um, I played basketball a lot. <laughs> um, so I would put like clubs. There's this thing called Polar Bear Club at Queen's House for the Sciences. And we would like play flag football and play basketball when it was cold, play flag football outside when it was warm, play flag football. I mean, play um, basketball inside when it was colder. Um, so clubs, um, hobbies, sports. I played basketball growing up, um, but I didn't play like on a competitive level when I was in high school. Like I used to play on this AAU team. Either way, um, I still would include that type of thing. Worker volunteering. I worked at Queller Prep. I would certainly include that. Volunteering experience, stuff like going to that food bank. Um, and I did some other volunteer type experiences as well. So just a few examples there. Hobbies. Some people put video games, you know, you know, <laughs> you, you don't necessarily have to put video games. That one you can leave out. Um, but it also is dependent upon like, what's your level of engagement in video games? Do you play, do you like compete um, on like a grander scale or is it just something that you kind of play with your friends and that's the extent to which it, it is a thing. Um, if you're playing on a grander scale and you're like competing on some national level or going through I, I, I couldn't game battles. I don't know. It, it, that used to always be the thing when I was a kid, then certainly that would be something that you include, but maybe not in this case. And then um, I'll lastly just touch quickly upon courses and grades. The colleges on your my colleges do not require to list complete to, to complete courses and grades, but some colleges will require a courses and grades. And we can go through that list, but not super important for the session. All right, so let's speak specifically about Cornell with our last few minutes here. And I'm sorry, Leo, that I took so much time, but we always kind of go through the basics to make sure that everyone's on the same page. Um, and what I'll do here, so hopefully it was clear that the common app portion of the application is what you are filling out that will go to all schools. The writing supplements are now specifically for Cornell. So Cornell will have different writing supplements than Columbia and UPenn and what have you, all, you know, whatever school has a writing supplement. And these writing supplements will be specifically about what Cornell offers or what Columbia offers or so on and so forth. So you'll want to make sure that you research the school and align what you're writing to, um, you know, the specific offerings of the school. Uh, so I'll, go, I'll jump to the questions. And yeah, I will let you jump in, Leo. Let me, All right. Uh, yes, uh, there was a parent question in the chat. We just want to emphasize that supplements are specific to schools, whereas the personal statement is to all of the schools that you are applying to through Common App. So one essay for all the schools you're applying to. Uh, right. Uh, uh, the, the supplemental essay is usually a reiteration of the question, why us? Or what major do you want to do at our school? Usually that's like the main question when it comes to supplements, whereas yeah. the personal statement tends to be a story, maybe a life experience, maybe something about you that you want to mention to them. Uh, the supplemental essay specific to Cornell for me was not even so much specific to Cornell, it was specific to the College of Arts and Sciences within Cornell. Yeah. Uh, the yeah. prompt was, uh, and I'm going to paste it into the chat, just one moment. And I think it'll pop up when I fill out this, so I'm sorry. Right, right, right. So you'll see it as Kareem goes, but uh, the prompt for the College of Arts and Sciences was students in arts and sciences embrace the opportunity to delve into multifaceted academic interests embodying in 21st century terms, Ezra Cornell's any person, any study founding vision. Tell us about the areas of study you are excited to explore and specifically why you wish to pursue them in our college. Now, I know that's like a lot of crazy words, a very kind of convoluted question. But again, like I said, supplemental questions come down to why do you want to study here? Why are you a fit for our school? What major do you want to pursue here? The biggest mistake, well, maybe not the biggest, but certainly a very, very big mistake that I think a lot of students make in the college application process 
is undermining the supplemental essay, putting all of their effort into the personal statement and brushing off the supplemental essays or even copy pasting supplemental essays for all the schools that they're applying to. This is a big, big, big mistake. This is your one chance to tell them why they should pick you over other people. I know it's very, very difficult to believe, especially uh, before the college application process, but numbers aren't everything, right? Think about it in terms of there are a thousand students that they could find with 101 averages, right? Every AP class that's offered at their school, leadership, extracurriculars, they can find students with all of those measures. What they're looking for is a student that fits to their criteria. What can they give to the school? What can the school give to them? This is where I poured my heart out about the CAPS major. Uh, I read the sentence before, but I am just going to read it again and say, uh, Again, I wrote, there is no other Asia Pacific or Chinese studies major in the world that is a better fit for what I want to do. You really, really want to emphasize that this is the school for you. This is the major. What do you want to pursue? Maybe they don't have everything in the major that you would like. How can you come to the school and make it your own? What kind of programs would you want to pursue? Who, who would you want to work with? Uh, you really, really, really have to individualize yourself in this question and don't brush it off. This is very, very important. Uh, another aspect of my personal college application was I always connected my supplemental essays to my personal statement. Remember, they look at your application very holistically and sometimes writing one essay for all your schools and then writing supplemental essays for each school kind of puts people in the headspace that these are two different playing fields when really this is one big story. You shouldn't be saying one thing, one dream in your personal statement and then kind of backtracking and having a different vision in your supplemental essay. Uh, everything should really, really work together. Uh, you know, if you, to put it into different terms, if you want to study STEM, then maybe you should look into internships that have to do with STEM, work opportunities that have, that have to do with STEM. Don't kind of uh, throw yourself out in every direction, uh, kind of focus in on one story, one idea. Perfect. And, uh, oh, we have a chat. Um, so we have a question in the chat. The supplemental essay is personal to each school you apply to. Yes, that is correct. So you have supplemental writings, that you'll have to fill out for individual schools. So this is Cornell's supplemental essay. Um, it's actually quite long, 650 words uh, relative, but they're typically not that long. Like Columbia has like four that are between uh, 50 and 250 words, if I'm not mistaken. That's coming off the top of my head. But yeah, either way, they, 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 they focus on different things because these schools have different things to offer. So um, yeah. Everything that Leo said, connecting your supplemental essay to your, your, your personal essay, the common essay, um, is the ideal situation. But again, I don't want anyone to get discouraged because that's not necessarily the case for everyone. Um, you know, we're multifaceted human beings. Maybe not everything has been so linear that you knew exactly what you wanted to do from the time that you were 10 years old and you've just kind of tried to stack different experiences in order to get to that point since you realized that. That's not the case for everyone, you know? Um, so, uh, you know, I, I, I hope that it's clear that you can write about different experiences. It doesn't necessarily have to be connected, though, if it can be, that is amazing. <laughs> um, and I guess the other thing that I'll double down on is, again, to Leo's point, this is the essay where you are pouring your heart out and saying why you want to go to this institution, right? So, the level of effort here needs to be commensurate with, um, with your with your with your common essay as well. Like, you need to show that you've done your research. When I applied to Columbia and I filled out my comment my my supplemental essays, certainly, I looked up kind of like programs that I was interested in, professors that I would be interested in learning from, and how that could tie into work that I've already done or how that can tie into my longer term vision. Um, and what you have to remember is that you don't necessarily have to do the things that you put in your essay, but you need to beforehand put the thought in and put the time in to research, to figure things out, to, to have a coherent story. Um, and if you don't put that level of effort in to begin with, then 
um, that's certainly like not the right path that you're taking. So I hope that that's clear. I hope it's clear that you need to put a great deal of effort into the research um, so that you have like meat to talk about in this essay. Um, and again, I just co-sign everything that Leo said. I just want to emphasize one point. Uh, at some point, Kareem said that not everyone knows what they want to do, especially at the age of 17. This is where it is especially important to really, really tune into the vibration of the school that you're applying to. Yeah. What I mean by that is every school has their own character, their own type of student that they're looking for. I think people oftentimes look at a bunch of schools, say, these are great schools, let me apply to all of them. You really have to tune into the school, see what they're looking for. Uh, this, for example, uh, the essay question that you see shared on the screen right now is specific to the College of Arts and Sciences within Cornell, whereas there would be a completely different question for engineering students, usually along the lines of what have you done, what kind of projects have you built. Yeah. Uh, in a liberal arts school, there may be a more open-ended approach. Brown University, for example, for which uh, early decisions actually came out today, they have a more holistic approach on education. They don't always want students who declare a major. They're a little bit more open to that. Other schools really do want someone who knows what they're going to do. You really have to, like Kareem said, put in the research. And in this supplemental essay, you don't want to look like someone that is copy pasting these questions because they know uh, what students are like. They know that students are very busy during their college applications, that they just go through these essays. No, you want to show that you know exactly what you're talking about, why you want that major at that specific school. Make yourself stand out. Perfect. Um, I want to just quickly, I just want to quickly interject everyone. There are 20 of you. I need you to type which high school you attend because I just want to see if it's Forest Hills. Um, I want to see or if it's um, Academy of Business. Also, um, everyone, please take a minute. It's really important that you message that into the group. Um, and I also want to just remind you, you need to notify your school that the webinars are good. Uh, the turnout, you know, we want to get more students to listen and these webinars are so helpful and we want to make sure that we get higher turnouts for these events, which are, you know, uh, a partnership with your schools. So I'm waiting for everyone to respond, every single person type in the school, that's important. And please also notify your school. Kareem, uh, if you could just give some closing remarks, Leo as well, and we'll close up. Perfect. So um, I, Francis, uh, see someone who messaged me directly saying that they're in Forest Hills. So let me just send you a direct message. I see. I, I'm getting oh, the okay. screenshots. I just, I want to see what's going on. And don't forget to notify your school. Okay. I see everyone. I, I'm taking a screenshot. Go ahead. Okay. Perfect. So um, I just wanted to give one quick other example here uh, to Leo's point about how each different school has a different supplemental essay to fill out. I just changed the school to the College of Engineering just to see what the supplemental essay would be for here. And notice how different it is. Each response should be no longer than 200 words versus the 650 that we saw in the College of Arts and Sciences. And please respond to two out of the three below. Engineering is inherently collaborative. What does collaboration mean to you? Like they're giving you, they're giving you a clue <laughs> as to what they want to see. They want to see like, a level of collaboration and how you've shown that in your own experiences beforehand. They even asked, what are some words that describe you before? So maybe it makes sense to go back and talk, maybe not use the exact word collaborative, but um, you know, some something that approaches the word collaborative either way. So what strengths do you bring to the collaborative process? So here I would write about being kind of like um, an architectural type of leader. So like guiding people and you know, co 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 coalescing information so that we can make a decision and have a path forward. Um, for you, what makes Cornell Engineering special? Why do you want to attend Cornell Engineering? Research the school. Like, make sure that the things that you mentioned here are unique to Cornell. You ideally want to find like some specific program that they offer that isn't offered in many places. Um, some specific graduate, uh, Robert F. Smith is one for example. <laughs> um, that, you know, you look up to very deeply, so on and so forth. But either way, um, you want to make sure that you kind of do due diligence in order to make sure 
that you are speaking intelligently to uh, why you want to go to Cornell. And I would almost argue that, sure, there's three choices here, but this is probably one of them that you should choose. Like, they're asking, why do you want to attend Cornell? You should have a strong answer for that. And then the last piece, diversity in all definitional forms is intrinsic excellence in engineering. Indeed, devising the best engineer solutions to complex problems is often achieved by drawing from the diverse ingenuity of people from broad different from broadly different backgrounds, lived experiences, and identities. How do you see yourself contributing to the diversity and inclusion of the Cornell engineering community? What is a unique voice? Yeah, yada, yada, yada. So um, this is something else that I've like talked about on these webinars beforehand. When people see the word diversity, um, they often think that it means something specific and like they have to fit a certain archetype, they have to be from a certain background or they have to look a certain way in order to fit into the diversity category. And that is not what they're going for. Diversity and inclusion isn't about like, isn't necessarily about those metrics that are, you know, very visible <laughs> or very clear in terms of your income background, your, your background as it pertains to income or something like that. Um, diversity can be like diversity of thought um, in lived experience. So like, what have you understood from your lived experience? I've, I've, I've in, to give a little bit of context to this, um, I have advised a student and we've talked through kind of the diversity statement and the diversity statement looked like, um, you know, my, my family has a, uh, a vacation home in this certain area. Um, and this is what that vacation home taught me and like how I could bring a different perspective to, to, to the school. Obviously, like on face value, that seems like, ah, maybe that's not really what they're looking for. Under, but you have to just be thoughtful about how you present this type of information. So um, the long story short, I don't want people to kind of feel like, oh, diversity, I should avoid that because I don't look a certain way or I don't come from a certain background or what have you. Um, diversity is in like a variety of facets. So um Hopefully that is a little bit helpful. But in terms of closing remarks, uh, I hope that this was helpful for everyone. We had a few questions in the chat about, oh, and let me respond to a question very quickly first. Hi, do you think Common, Common App essays written as a montage essay can still be successful? Uh, I don't know exactly what you mean by montage essay. I don't know if Leo, if that strikes you, um, but I, I think that when you're writing your common app essay, you should err on the side of safety. Um, you shouldn't write a soliloquy. You shouldn't write a poem. You shouldn't write, you, like, you, um, yeah, there's, there's, there's many things that you can do. Uh, it shouldn't be like stream of consci consciousness. It should be like a structured essay with a beginning, middle, and end type of thing. Um, so obviously you can go in a different route if, if you're so impassioned to do so, but my recommendation is to err on the side of safety and hopefully that's helpful. Um, but I haven't heard that terminology before montage essay. So if, if you'd like to kind of give me one more chat to explain what you mean, then that would be helpful as well. And one more question for the why some college supplemental essay, is it all right to briefly speak about how you caught interest in a particular field and why you're pursuing that major and then go on to discuss how the college's programs would help you? Yes, no, certainly. So, um, like, why are you interested in, so for my, my case, why am I interested in chemical engineering for this reason? Um, but now when you're tying it back to the essay, when we're tying it back to the school, the school should have like some connection to chemical engineering that is kind of unique to your scenario. It shouldn't just be, I'm interested in chemical engineering. You guys do chemical engineering. So that's why I want to go here. It can't be that surface level. It needs to be, I'm interested in chemical engineering because in chemical engineering, you can go into the renewable energy sector. You guys have like the best renewable energy um, research department of, you know, the colleges in the Northeast. And I want to stay in the Northeast because I want to stay near my family. You are the best school for me to go to. Do you see like the difference there? Hopefully that's helpful. Um, one more question. What will we have to fill out these college essays even? Oh, sorry. Would we have to fill out? Okay, no problem. Would we have to fill out these college essays even for colleges of medical science or general health field? Also, these can be only these can only be filled after high school or the first year of college, right? Um, yes. Yeah, so the Common App is for after high school when you're applying as a first year student or in after your first year of college as a transfer student. Um, colleges of medical science or general health field 
So if you're talking about med school, there's going to be separate applications for med school. If you're talking about like public health, there's going to be separate applications for public health. And those you're going to do post getting your bachelor's. Um, so that'll be a completely separate process. But if you're talking about medical science in at the undergraduate level, um, that is dependent upon the school that you apply to. So some schools that do medical science or do general health um, won't have supplemental essays, though other schools that do that will have supplemental essays. So it's less about like the major and more about the university system. Um, closing remarks. Thank you. I hope that you all had a great night and I hope that this is informative. These, this, this recording will be posted on the Queller Prep website or on the Queller Prep uh, YouTube. You so, have, yeah, we have a YouTube channel and Kareem, you're, you're recording, right? Yes, I am. So yeah, the, this recording will be posted on the Queller Prep YouTube. We got a few questions about that um, and I will pass it off to Leo. Thank you all again. Uh, thank you, Kareem. To the question concerning uh, a montage essay, I will say this, that if you go online and you read examples of essays that got students into their schools, they range across the board. There are cases of students writing about grilled cheese. Uh, other students simply write about their experiences, right? What kind of work they've done outside of school. The main idea is to get through who you are, the kind of student that you are. Every single college meeting that you go to, college webinar, they repeat this mantra of why are you a fit for our school? And it didn't click for me until the essay. You want to tell them why you are a fit for the school. Really drive in what individualizes you out of all of the other students that are applying. Be genuine. Look at this as a fun experience. Really, it is. It's just another part of going into the academic world. Really try to hone into who you are, what kind of student you are, what you want to do. Uh, good luck. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, thank you so much, Leo, and congrats again for getting into Cornell. That is a huge accomplishment, and I hope that you can take some time to celebrate, um, even though we're going through. Oh, so much. Everyone give, everyone, give Leo, type thank you in the chat box, everyone. This is important. Please type thank you. And I'm going to do a very special request, Kareem. Um, everyone, please take a moment to email those of you at Fort Hills High School. Email your principals. You see me. We really want to push a bigger turnout please make sure that you're doing that as well because this is an important partnership with the school. And I would very much be 200, okay? So please type thank you into the chat. And as I said, the goal would be 100 participants. Wouldn't that be nice? Mm -hmm. So everyone take a moment to do this. Thank you both for doing this. Yo, thank you. I am honored that you did this and you always do it on, on short notice. You're, you're just, yeah, you're just a yeah. jewel. You're no, Thank honestly. You. And Kareem, Kareem, you just are beyond everything. I could, there are no words, really. And I have quite a bit of vocabulary. So I have a, a tremendous amount of gratitude. And Leo, for you, for you to give back 48 hours after getting a response to an Ivy League is amazing. Really amazing. All right. Thank you. Thank you so much. And Kareem, if you could just reiterate that that's the goal um, is to just remind, you know, kind of just send the email out as well, just saying webinars are very helpful. Yes, please do everyone. We have these webinars from seven to eight every Thursday. Um, if you could email your principal, if you could reach out to friends in your classes, all of those things. Um, these webinars are meant for you. And the more people that are here, the more information we can share, um, the better it is for everyone. Uh, Francis has been doing this and I've been doing this for so many years now. I guess, Francis, you've been bordering maybe 15 years that the business has been a thing at this point. So um, crazy. Francis time. has, has quite a bit of history in the educational system. So is a wealth of knowledge and um, we are here to support you. So please do share it with your friends, your family, anyone at your school. And um, we are happy to, to share as much information. Yes, as possible we want to keep the partnerships with the schools going. So thank you, everyone. All right. Thank you for listening. And Leo, if you want to give a final goodbye, please do as well. Thank you guys so much. Uh, really don't look at this as a challenge. Look at it as more of showing who you are, trying your best to get through to these schools, what kind of student you will be and what you can accomplish at their schools. Don't stress about it. Oh, Kareem, you want to, you want to take everyone off mute really fast? Everyone, we're just going to sure. give a big uh, thank you. So let's do it. One, two, three. Thank you. Let's say thank you really fast. Go ahead. Can we unmute? Yes, they can. They can now. You all can unmute.
Thank you. Big no thank problem. you. <laughs> Can't no thank you problem. enough. <laughs> you all have a good night. Thank you. Good night to you too.